All right, so uh, for the next part of the class, we're going to talk about a couple of topics on the switching and sorting. But before that, let's talk uh, briefly about the quiz. OK, I think uh, let's just say that you guys did better last week uh, than this week. Uh, so now, some of you we will invite you to the Friday workshop for um, you know failing the quiz. but. Uh, Looking at the situation, we may not have enough room for everyone. <laughs> so we probably need to redefine uh, the passing rate just for this week. I, I think I would say that if you get at least four, we would call it a pass. Uh, now, only if you get below four, you will need to come for the Friday workshop. Now, so there are a couple of things here. So one, I think complexity itself is, is a difficult topic. OK, so for one thing, right, so we don't have uh, the partial marks like uh, we did last uh, week. So I think that makes it a bit more difficult. The second thing is that uh, the topic complexity, this is actually something that we want you to get by the end of the course. Uh, but we need to introduce it early so that you can uh, keep practicing it. So in fact, I think when we come and discuss different algorithms, we will always come back to the notion of complexity. How do we analyze it? How do we get to the overall worst case? So hopefully with more practice and repetitions over the term, uh, it's going to get a little bit easier. Now on the other hand, uh, even if we don't invite you for the uh, Friday workshop, uh, we will still give you the materials. Uh, essentially what's going to happen on the Friday workshop is that you're going to be given a new set of uh, quiz questions to attempt. And then after that, we'll discuss the answers with you. All right. Now uh, the next topic is going to be on iteration and decomposition. So the, the idea here behind iteration is that what computer does well is to repeat. So that's what it means to iterate. So we're going to look at how some algorithms are solving a problem based on iteration. Uh, but there are ways to improve upon the complexity uh, through the strategy that we call decomposition. So we'll look at essentially two different algorithms to solve a, a searching problem as well as another two algorithms to solve the sorting problem and how is it that it can improve the complexity through uh, decomposition. Now, the materials here are uh, essentially some algorithms. They are based on some implementations on uh, Python. Now, we have made these implementations available to you over the content on eLearn. So if you go to the uh, session four, right? There are going to be a couple of Python files there. So this is called search sort lab, and the other one is animation. So they contain similar algorithms that the ones we're going to discuss today, uh, but the animation one has animation. And by the way, these uh, Python uh, codes have been written by the TAs, so Wei Xiang, as well as the two other TAs for the other two sections. Uh, over time, you're going to see more of this kind of Python libraries as we go and talk about the uh, different topics. All right. Now, the first part is to talk about searching problem. And uh, searching itself is not a new problem. I mean, the, the idea of searching essentially is a very basic operation that you need to do to find a particular element given a data collection. And the most basic form of searching is brute force. So when you do brute force, it means that you're going to look at every possible location. And uh, one way of doing that is something that we call linear search. So linear search is called linear because if you store in your data in an array, so you pretend that it's in a line, so it's going to search for it linearly, linearly, so from left to right. But the concept is the fact that it's a brute force, meaning that we're going to inspect every possible position. So in reality, you can go from left to right or right to left. It doesn't quite matter as long as you have a systematic way of actually getting to every possible position. And the reason why we need to get to every possible position is because the data is not organized in any particular way. So we have to look at all the possibilities. Now, uh, linear search method is going to look like this. Uh, suppose that you have an array. And in this case, array has a number of words. So if you call linear search, we term it L search, searching for Kiwi on an array A. So it's going to return 2, which is the index of the element Kiwi within this array. Now, if you're looking for something that is not even in the array, for example, like banana, then it's going to return minus 1. Because minus 1 uh, here indicates that it's not within 0 to n minus 1. 
So in that case, it's not a valid element within the array. Now the implementation is straightforward. Uh, here you have a loop, and within the loop, we are going to look at every possible index i from 0 all the way to the last element, which is uh, n minus 1. And each time we're just going to see whether the element index i is what we're looking for, which is in this case k. If yes, then we return i. Otherwise, we return minus 1. Now, the worst case for an array like this is when you look at all the possible places, you still don't find what you're looking for. <coughs> so which means that so-called you have wasted your time to look at all the possible places, which means that an array of size n, you need to look at n spots before you realize that the element that you are finding is not there. If that is the case, then the complexity is going to be on. Now, uh, in the best case, uh, you're going to find it in the first place you look. In that case, it's O1. But you know, we, that's not likely to happen, right? So because you might be searching for different elements. On, a, on the average case, if you look between the best case and the worst case, then it will be 1 plus n divided by 2, which is n plus 1 over 2 comparisons on the average. Now, if you look at the big O, it's still going to be ON. So I think that's, that's part of the reason why we last time we said that when you analyze algorithms, uh, it's important to know what is the worst case because you can prepare for the worst case. It's also important to know what is the average case. But generally, average cases are more difficult to analyze. And luckily, most of the time, the average case complexity is actually quite similar to the worst case complexity in terms of the big O. So that's why most of the time what we do is to analyze the worst case. So in this case, for example, the worst case complexity and the average complexity will still be ON. Now, we would like to go beyond Linear search. Now, linear search is a concept of brute force. We use search every <coughs> possible place. So to improve upon that, we come across this idea of decomposition. Now, decomposition simply means that we are trying to solve a problem by making it a smaller problem. And one way to make the problem smaller is to be able to look at your array that you're searching and to cut down the search space. So instead of looking over all of the array, can we focus on certain parts of the array? And one way of doing that that is inspired by the way we look up dictionary, right? So if you you know you used to have this like paper dictionary, the, like a book, right? So we when you're looking for a particular word, you probably first randomly open a page somewhere in the dictionary, and then you see whether the word that you're looking for is on the page or not. Most of the time it's not. But you always know whether you want to go forward or you want to go backward. And the reason why you know is because the book or the dictionary is organized in alphabetical order for all the words. So we are going to do something similar. If you can sort the elements first inside your array, sorting it meaning that you will organize it along some uh, principle, for example, like increasing order, descending order, then we can actually save a lot of time. Now we will call it binary search because the way that is going is to make binary decision every time. And the binary decision essentially is to first start at the middle part of the array. So suppose that you're looking at this array, now it's sorted, right? From smallest to the largest one. And we're gonna start looking in the middle. So suppose that you're looking for 57, you look right there in the middle. The midpoint is 71, so it's not what you're looking for, it's not 57. But you always know where to go. You, do you go to the left or do you go to the right? But because 57 is smaller than 71, we'll go to the left. Now, what does going to the left mean? Going to the left means that this side of the array, we will never need to look at it. Because we know that if we are looking for 57, we will never find it after 71. So that essentially allows us to save time by focusing our attention to only the part of the array that might actually contain the item. Now, the algorithm that implements binary search is given in one of the slides. We're going to look at that first. Now, this is the algorithm. And we're going to look at the runtime based on the execution. So let's look at an example. So we will start with a full size array. So when you are looking for something, you know that the array element could be anywhere in the array. So it could be anywhere in the array. We're going to use two variables, lower and upper, to delimit the space that we are searching. So initially, the full space that we are searching is the full array. So we are going to imagine there are two brackets. 
the left bracket and the right bracket that encloses uh, the part of the array that we are searching. So if you are searching from 0 to n minus 1, so then the lower bracket is going to be the 1 before that, which is minus 1, and the upper bracket is going to be 1 after that, which is going to be n. So initially, it's going to be lower equals to minus 1, upper is the length of the array, and that's what these two lines are doing here. Then we're going to enter into a loop. Now, the loop here, the first line is going to check whether or not lower and upper are just different by 1. So the key idea is that if your left bracket and the upper bracket, and they're just different by 1, which means that they're just next to one another, so the area in between the two of them is empty. So there is nothing there, which means that we have narrowed down the search space to nothing. Now, in the beginning, that might not happen. So what we're going to do is to find a midpoint. So the midpoint here is just to sum up the two numbers, minus 1, 15, 14 divided by 2 is 7. So the first part that we are looking for, we're looking at, is going to be the middle part of the array. And index 7 is 71. So then we know that 57 is not 71. And that's what this is checking. Is 57 71? Now, if the answer is yes, we will return just the midpoint already. But if, because the answer is no, then we need to make uh, one decision. Do we go to the left if it is smaller? Or do we go to the right if it is larger? So in this case, because midpoint is uh, the, the mid value is 71, is actually larger than 57, what we're looking for. So we need to go to the left. Going to the left means we need to move the right bracket down to the midpoint. So that's what we have done here. So we move it down to the midpoint. Then we find a new midpoint within this smaller search space, minus 1, 7. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So this is the next midpoint that we are looking at, 35. 35 is not 57. 57 is larger, so we go to the right side. So we narrow it down again. We find the next midpoint. Then finally, we find it. So the complexity of searching like this essentially have a similar kind of analysis in the sense that we need to look at what is the best case, what is the worst case. Now, the best case is that what you're finding is in the first midpoint right there in the middle of the array. So then it's going to return in O1 time. But in the worst case, we have not found what we are looking for. Now, if we don't find what we are looking for, it means that we have narrowed down the search space all the way until we get an empty array. And we still have not found it. Which means that if we start from size 8, we go down to 4, 4 to 2, 2 to 1, and 1 to 0. And 1 to 0 means there is no more uh, thing to be searching, right? Now, the number of divisions that you can do in order to go from some number all the way to 1 is log of n. So you're going to go from 8 size 8, size 4, that's one division. 4 to 2, that's a second division. 2 to 1, that's a third division. You get to 1, which means a log 2 of n is the number of times that you need to divide n by 2 until you get a value of 1. Now, but 1 is still the last element that you're searching. The next time, it will take you to 0, which means that by the time you get to an empty array, it's going to be a log 2n plus 1. Now, when you take the complexity, it's going to be just O log n. Now, how efficient is log n? Log n is actually very, very efficient. Because what does log n mean? It means that if you double your array, if you go from 8 to 16, in terms of binary search, you just need to do one more operation, which is just one more division, right? You go to 16 to 32, it's only one more. Even you go from 1 million to 2 million, it's only one more. You go from 10 million to 20 million, it's only one more. So doubling the size of the input will only need one more operation. Now, that is not the same as linear search. Linear search is ON, which means that if you double the array, you need to double the size of uh, the number of times that you're going to run. So if you go from 1 million to 2 million, then you need to do 1 million more, not just one more. Right, so the complexity of binary search is log n. Now, um, we're going to spend maybe about 5-10 minutes just to look at a couple of examples here, uh, just to get familiar with the operation. I will suggest that you do it by hand so that you actually understand the workings of this. And we're going to inspect uh, the comparison between binary search and linear search for searching array x for different keys, like in this case it's 7 and 50. So we'll spend a few minutes on this and then we're going to discuss together as a class. <coughs> 